Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to create this space and time animation using Linearity Move. Let's get started. When I first open the app, I'm going to see the home screen. To create a new document, I click the plus button. Here I can pick the resolution of my new document or import an existing file. I'm going to select this curve file and hit the import button to enter the scene builder panel. Here I can see as many artboards as there are on my design file. I tap and hold to drag one artboard to the bottom of the panel. I can create multiple scenes by adding another artboard on the scene builder line. I can also change the duration of the scene from here. When I am done, I click the import button. I double tap the first scene to enter the timeline. I select one of the wavy orbit. I move the playhead to the end of the timeline. I pinch the screen with two fingers to zoom out a little bit. I use the orange dot around the bounding box to rotate the object. If I tap the screen with a finger, the rotation locks every 45 degrees. And just like that, I've added a rotation animation to this object. I repeat the same steps to add a rotation transition to the bigger orbit. And this is how I rotate these two objects. They both revolve around their pivot point, which is set at the center of their object as a default. I pinch the screen to zoom in. I select one of the planets. I switch to design mode. Then I select the pivot point at the center of the planet and I move it on top of the small white dot that I put at the center of the design. I switch back to animate mode. I move the playhead to the end of the timeline. I select the orange dot around the bounding box and this time when I rotate the planet, it revolves around the pivot point positioned on the white dot. I repeat the same steps on the other ovals so they rotate around the center of the design. I just make sure that before changing the position of the pivot point, I switch to design mode. Then back to animate mode to add the rotation keyframes to the timeline. I select all the orbits. I browse the preset library on the right and I select the scale in transition. I scroll down on the timeline and I drag the animation bars to delay the start of each transition for a nice cascading effect. Then I select all the planets. I activate the multi-selection button and I tap all the objects I want to include in my selection. I go back to the preset library and I select fade in. I tap and hold on the layers panel on the left and I select group selection. I slide the animation bar of the group to delay the start to second one of the timeline. Then I tidy up the end of the timeline by adjusting the handle of the animation bar. I've added a text layer in the bottom left corner. I select it and I select the must reveal preset. I move the playhead towards the end of the timeline to second six. Then I select the must hide preset. The label is a bit too big. I select it and switch to design mode. I click the green dot around the bounding box to resize the text. And this is how I animate my label to appear and disappear. I double tap on scene two. I select the orange line. I switch to design mode and I change the position of the pivot point. I align the pivot point to the center of the clock. I switch to animate mode. I move the playhead to the end of the timeline. I rotate the object around the clock. I select the white line and repeat the same steps. Switch between design mode to edit the pivot point and to animate mode to add the rotation. I tap on the pin icon. With pinning active, I can quickly define the start and end points of my next transition. I leave the playhead at the beginning of the orange segment to create the first keyframe. I select one of the lines inside the clock. 
I move it and I change the opacity to 0%. With pinning active, the ending keyframe is added automatically. Completing the position and opacity transition I want to add to this object. I repeat these same steps to add this position and opacity transition to all the lines inside the clock. When I am done, I slide the animation bars on the timeline to have each line appear one after the other. I activate pinning again and I edit the position of the second pin to highlight a segment of the timeline between second 0 and second 3. With my playhead positioned at the beginning, I move all the ovals outside the canvas. I also change opacity to 0% to make the transition smoother. I scroll down the layer panel I open the drop-down to see the keyframes on each object. I copy the keyframes at the beginning of the timeline and I paste them at the end. I repeat this action for all the ovals. With this trick, the ovals come in and then out at the end of the animation. I double tap scene 1 and check that I am on design mode. I select the text layer and I copy it. I go back to project and I double tap on scene 2. I paste the label on this scene. I double tap the text object to edit the text and to change the alignment. Then I select the label and I move it to the right side of the layout. The animation keyframes will remain the same. Now it's time to add a transition between the two scenes. Here I select the lightning bolt icon between scene 1 and scene 2. On the panel on the right, I change the type to push and set the direction to bottom to top. I change the timing to natural and increase the duration to 2 seconds. To make sure I have enough space between the scenes, I double tap scene 2 and I drag the animation bar along the timeline. This way, I'm delaying the start of the second scene by 1 second. And here's the final result. My design has come to life for a journey between space and time. When I'm ready, I can export my animation by tapping the down arrow on the top left corner and select Export. Here, I can preview my animation one last time before exporting it. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can learn more about Linearity Move and animation from the Learn tab on the home screen. Let's bring our stories to life with Linearity Move.